This is another example of using Newton's version of Kepler's third law. So in this problem, we're talking about Saturn's beautiful rings, which are made of small ice and dust particles. Um, the rings are, are lettered, and the D ring is about 6.7 times 10 to the 4 kilometers from the center of Saturn, and the particles orbit with an average orbital period of 4.9 hours. We can use this information to calculate the mass of Saturn. So let's take a look at the formula that we're going to be using. So Newton's version of Kepler's third law has the period squared is equal to 4 times pi squared divided by g, the gravitational constant, times m1 plus m2, all times the average distance cubed. Um, let's take a look at mass. We're just asked to get the mass of Saturn. In the formula here, we have m1 plus m2. And so it's the mass of the thing that's orbiting um, added to the mass of the thing that is being orbited. Now, a dust particle is going to be so much smaller than Saturn that it doesn't really matter if you add its mass to Saturn's mass. And so I'm going to rewrite this just using one mass because practically that's, that's all we're dealing with. 4 pi squared divided by g times the mass, and that is the mass of Saturn, times a cubed. All right. Fantastic, except we're trying to solve for the mass, and right now the mass is not by itself on one side of the equals sign. So I'm going to rearrange this equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by mass. So mass is going to cancel on this side. Let me rewrite this. Mass times period squared is equal to 4 pi squared over g times a cubed. So now I need to divide both sides by period, and that will leave mass by itself. So that's the same thing as multiplying this side by 1 divided by p squared. It's going to be a long problem. <laughs> We're going to need to stretch out the page. So mass of Saturn by itself is equal to 4 pi squared divided by g. And I'm just going to move this so I have a cubed over p squared. All right, we're ready to go as soon as we know what numbers to put in for our constants and our variables. So the constants, pi, you can use 3.14. If you prefer to stretch it out some more with some more digits, that's just fine. G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And remember, G has units. Units here, meters cubed kilogram second squared, which looks funny, but that's what it needs to have everything work out. All right, the other two are our variables, the distance and the period. So the distance we were given, A, was 6.70 times 10 to the 4 kilometers. But we need this to be in meters because G has meters. So we're going to convert, multiply it by 1,000, which is 10 to the 3 meters per kilometer. Kilometers are going to cancel. And this will be 6.70 times 10 to the 7 meters. That's 67 million meters. Period. We were told that the period was 4.9 hours. But the units on G are seconds, so we need to change this into seconds. You can change it from hours to minutes and then minutes to seconds. But um, in this class in astronomy, it's, it's pretty handy to remember that there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. So hours will cancel. And this is going to work out to be 1.764 times 10 to the 4 seconds. All right. We know what we're putting in. Let's put it in. So the mass is going to equal 4 times 3.14 squared divided by 6.67 
It's 10 to the minus 11. And then we have a cubed of 6.70. It's 10 to the 7 meters cubed divided by p squared, 1.764 times 10 to the 4 seconds. That's going to be squared. And I should write my units over here, meters cubed per kilogram seconds squared. All right. So let's start simplifying this a little bit. Uh, at this point, if you just want to try to, to work ahead and get to the answer, um, you can move through the rest of the stuff real fast and just see if you get the right answer. Um, or you can watch me break this down step by step and compare your numbers at different steps. So 4 times pi squared, um, this number pops up a lot. So again, you might want to calculate this out and just write it somewhere in a notebook so that you don't have to continually put it back in your calculator. This works out to be 39.48 divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. And now let's, let's do the exponents over here. So a cubed works out to be 3.008 times 10 to the 23, and that's going to be meters cubed, divided by p squared. And that number works out to be 3.112 times 10 to the 8, and that's seconds squared. <laughs> Again, need more room. Let's take a look at the units. In the denominator, we have 1 over second squared right here, multiplied by second squared, so those are going to cancel. We have the meters cubed, canceling with meters cubed down here. So let's calculate these two um, two division pieces. The first one, 39.48 divided by g, this works out to be 5.919 times 10 to the 11, and all the units have canceled out except we divided by 1 divided by kilograms, so that's going to show up here as just kilograms. So this number is going to be multiplied by 9.649 times 10 to the 14, and no units left over there. So the final number, I get 5.7, I'm rounding a little bit here, times 10 to the 26 kilograms. And I can compare this to the actual mass of Saturn, and um, it turns out to be pretty much right. Um, the actual mass, according to my textbook, is 5.69 times 10 to the 26. So 5.7 times 10 to the 26. We did a pretty good job here. Um, if you were doing this on your homework, you would still need to write this answer in a complete sentence. So something like, the mass of Saturn is 5.7 times 10 to the 26 kilograms. And we're done. Good job.